Tom, aka Pongo Warring, was an Aston Villa great. He played for the villains between 1928 and 1935, scoring 167 goals for the club. His goal-scoring record, combined with his charismatic personality, cemented his place as a hero at Villa Park. This is the story of Pongo Warring, an Aston Villa legend. Tom Waring was born in Birkenhead on the 12th of October 1906. His family home was right by Brunton Park, the home of Tranmere Rovers. He was spotted playing football as a child and was offered a spot at the Tranmere Rovers reserve team, which he would combine with working on first team match days. In his first season at the reserves, he would net 34 goals. His work at match days included a variety of tasks, such as helping the ground staff prepare the stadium for a match and selling chocolate and cigarettes to the spectators. He made his senior debut for Tranmere in August 1927 and four days later netted his first two senior goals in a 3-1 win over Durham City. Around this time, Warring would acquire the nickname Pongo. There are a number of theories as to how he got this nickname, but the most widely accepted one is that he was likened to a cartoon dog called Pongo, who, like Warring, enjoyed practical jokes. The nickname stuck, and as a result Warring would almost never be known as Tom ever again. Warring continued to impress, and even netted six times in an 11-1 win over Durham City. He would finish the season with 23 goals in 24 appearances for Tranmere, and his reputation was helping him gain attention. In February 1928, Aston Villa purchased Warring from Tranmere for a fee of £4,700. It was the highest fee a third division club had ever received. The signing of Warring was hugely anticipated, although he would start off in the reserves at Villa Park too. He made his debut for Aston Villa reserves against Birmingham City, and a crowd of 23,000 would turn up to see him play. Warring rewarded these supporters in style, netting a hat-trick. It wasn't long before he was integrated into the first team, and he would score on his debut against Sunderland. In his first full season, Warring burst onto the scene, netting 32 goals. His second full season saw him struggle with injuries, although he still netted 11 times. Warring had struck up a rapport with the Villa faithful, who adored him. He was often seen in a Holt pub after games, where he would drink and engage with the supporters. His drinking also often got in the way of training, with teammate Billy Walker stating nobody ever knew what time Warring would arrive at training. He was also known to steal leftover lemonade from the club's canteen and store it in bottles, which he would take home. But his bizarre behaviour didn't impact his output on the pitch. On the opening day of the 1930-1931 season, Pongo Warring scored four goals as Villa beat Manchester United 4-3 at Old Trafford. It was a sign of things to come, as he would go on to net four again against West Ham, and another four against Sunderland later in the season. Whilst Villa would finish the season in second, Warring had a chance in his final game to reach a half-century for the campaign. Warring had 49 goals in all competitions, going into their final league match against Man City. He didn't disappoint. Pongo Warring would net in a victory to seal 50 goals in 40 games across all competitions for the season. It is a record no Aston Villa player has reached since. Around this time, Warring would also make his debut for England. He netted in a 5-2 defeat to France on his first cap, and would go on to net in matches against Scotland and Ireland. But he would only receive five caps for England, owed in part to the fact that Villa were on the decline, as well as the fact that younger players were being given more opportunities for the national team. Sadly, Waring's career soon began to decline. The tolerance for his behaviour was starting to wane, with his attitude to training causing frustration to grow, and he also received multiple suspensions from the FA. In 1935, a Villa side on their way to relegation sold Pongo Waring to Barnsley. Aston Villa fans were furious, and 5,000 of them called for Warring to return to Villa. But Warring's time at Villa Park was over, having netted 167 goals in 226 appearances. He struggled after departing, with spells at Barnsley and Wolves providing little to get excited about. But afterwards, at the age of 30, he would return to his home side, Tranmere Rovers. 
He would net 15 goals in his first season back at Tranmere, and in the 37-38 campaign, scored 22 goals as Tranmere won the third division title to seal promotion to the second division for the first ever time. Waring had regained his career, but quickly it fell apart again. Off-field issues plagued Waring, including an attempt to fight a police officer in a bus and major financial worries. He would soon leave Tranmere, who fell apart and were immediately relegated in his absence. He would become a journeyman, turning out for clubs such as Bath City, Ellesmere Port and New Brighton, before eventually retiring from the game. Little information exists on Waring's life after leaving football, with some saying he worked as a plasterer, others saying he watched Tranmere every week, as well as rumours he fell into poverty and homelessness. None of these stories can be verified, and quite how the legendary Waring lived out the rest of his life will forever remain a mystery. Pongo Waring died on the 20th of December 1980, aged 74. His ashes would be scattered in front of the Holt End before Aston Villa played a match against Stoke City. Whilst over time, Pongo Waring's name may have slid into obscurity, he is still an icon at Villa Park. He boasts the second most goals scored by an individual in an English top flight season, second only to fellow Tranmere graduate Dixie Dean. Whilst he may not have won any honours at Villa, when asked if he would move to a club more likely to claim silverware, he responded, Why would I? This is my family. Whilst his career may have gone mostly downhill after his 50-goal season, his name will forever be enshrined in English football history, and whilst he had no major honours to his name, he will always be known as one of the finest players to ever grace the turf of Villa Park. <laughs>